and a shelter in the time of storm. Amen, amen. This is not our traditional youth day that we normally uh, try to get uh, one of our uh, young people, especially those who are uh, either seniors in high school uh, or who have recently graduated uh, from high school to be our speakers on Youth Day. Uh, but uh, Sister uh, Jada, Sister Hampton, is one who had committed uh, some months ago uh, to being one of the speakers, and because of the scheduling situations with uh, college and where, where she'll be attending, there was a great possibility she would not be here for our regular youth day, which would be the fifth Sunday of this month. And so because of that, uh, we wanted her to speak, and as she agreed to do that, uh, we opened up this Sunday for that. And we'll have another uh, one of our youth on the fifth Sunday, the Lord willing, uh, of, of this month. But as we have Sister Jada, uh, all of us who've been a part of the church through the years and even recently recognize Sister Jada. Uh, Sister Jada has been a member of the church for many years, from, from her youth, uh, attending with her family, of course, and giving her life to Christ. Uh, she is one who has been so involved uh, in the church work uh, as family members have uh, worked, especially in the kitchen area. Sister Jada, from a child, has been involved in working in the kitchen uh, uh, with, with uh, preparing for the serving and uh, clean up afterwards and seeing that uh, those who are eating or what have you are properly cared for. I don't know if she's done much cooking, uh, <laughs> but on the other things that I have observed, she's really been just involved in it all. She's one who has been so caring, giving attention through the years to her uh, brother, uh, Brother Jeremiah, of whom we know uh, is ill and has been from birth. Uh, but she is so attentive even to him, uh, helping her mother in his care and in giving love at home. Certainly obvious to us of the love that is in her uh, for the Lord and for the church and for her family as well as for others. And so having recently uh, graduated from high school now and in uh, making plans to further her education, it gives me great pleasure at this time to present to you uh, our own Sister Jada Hampton, uh, who will be attending, as you have in your bulletins, as a freshman at Indiana University Southeast. I'm asking that you give her your prayers, your attention, as she shall come before us uh, with a word of encouragement with a message to help us all. Let us say amen, amen. as Sister Jada shall come. Good morning. Today I will be coming from Matthew chapter six, verses 30 through 34. Matthew 6, verses 30 through 34. And it reads, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wh wherewith all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for these things of itself. Suffering unto the day 
is the evil thereof. The subject of today is the way to success. The first point is avoid the slippery things of life and do not put your trust in things that does not last. The first slippery thing of life that you shouldn't put your trust into is power. Psalms 37 verses 35 through 36, it says, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away and lo, he was not. Yet I sought him but he could not be found. The second slippery thing of life that you should not put your trust into is life itself. Psalms 90 verses 10. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. The third slippery thing of life that you should not put your trust into and that does not last is material things. Psalms 102, verses 25 through 26. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yeah, all of them shall wax old like a garment, as a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. When I was reading this, it made me think of everything will perish, but God will remain. The fourth thing, the fourth slippery thing of life that you should not put your trust into that will not last is pleasure. Luke 12, verses 19 through 20. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thou shalt be required of thee. Then who shall those things be, which thou hast provided? The fifth slippery thing of life that you should not trust is knowledge, which is of this world alone. 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Charity, ne charity never fails, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. The sixth slippery thing of life that you should not put your trust in is glory. First Peter first, chapter 1, verses 24. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man, as the flower of grass, the grass wet with wet, and the flower thereof falleth away. The second point of today is embrace things that are stable and put your trust in things that will last. The first thing that you should embrace and that are stable and that you, should, that you should put your trust in is spiritual food. John 6, verses 27. Labor not, the, labor not for the meat which perish, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. The second one, the second thing that you should embrace is spiritual works. Philippians 2, verses 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The third thing that you should embrace and that is stable and that you should put your trust into is spiritual graces. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 13. And now at this faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. The fourth thing that you should embrace and that is stable and that you should put your trust into is spiritual things that are invisible. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I'm going to say it one more time. <laughs> While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The fifth thing that we should embrace and that we should put our trust into that will last is the spiritual kingdom. Hebrews 12, verses 27. 
and this word yet and this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as the things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain there's a couple questions that I will be answering that I have down it says the first question it says how can these scriptures benefit the youth of today the scriptures can benefit the youth because the devil can come into your life and play my games on you to make the bad things look good, but then God comes and takes over and the devil flees. The second question is, what does the scriptures mean to me and my goals for the future? I said, these scriptures mean a lot. They taught me to have faith, hope, and most of all, to love. My goal is to keep reading the Bible more and getting closer with God. The third question asks, what does being a Christian and a member of Baptized Pentecostal Church mean to me? I said, being a Christian and a member of the church, it means a lot. Over the years, I have found myself getting closer to God and the Bible. And it asks me, how has this affected my life? There are many people my age that don't go to church, that's not into church. They um, are really out on the street, you know, um, Coming to the church, well, I've been in church all my life, and it's really meant something. It meant a lot because I'm not like those other kids. I'm not out on the streets. I go to school every day. Well, I went to school every day, and I plan on going to school every day when I further might get to it. <laughs> but um, it's just a lot. Like, there's a lot of kids that's not into church that should be in church. The um, fourth question, it asks me what person I person have had the greatest influence in my life. Um, there's a lot of people that has a great influence in my life, um, whether it be teachers, people in the church, but most of all, it is my mother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's the best mother anybody could ask for. She's a strong, strong woman. <laughs> some people say they understand, but I don't really know sometimes. The way she carries herself and <laughs> just like when my brother, you know. I look up to her so much. I don't know where I would be without her. She taught me so much, especially with my brother. <coughs> and I just want to say I love you so much. <laughs> but she's a very, very, very strong woman. The last question it asks me, what advice and encouragement do you have for the youth? My first and foremost, always keep God first. Always, no matter what you are going through, keep him first. That's what you always should do, keep him first. Always trust in him, let him guide you. Stay in school, stay focused in school, never give up on school. That's one thing you should never do, never give up in school. Keep yourself, push yourself every day. Try to make yourself do better day by day. Because I used to hate school. <laughs> I didn't want to, I always played sick. But my 12th grade year, I realized it's something that you should not want to do. Zeta handled the uh, format so well, I certainly want to give you an opportunity if you have any questions.
that you would like to ask of her. She's ready to answer. Your turn. Special education. Yes, ma'am. Like, can you, like, explain? Oh, yes, ma'am. Almost every day when I was in school, like, they all ask me questions, and then it'd be some stupid question, and I just look at them and say, just go to church. <laughs> I could tell you about yesterday. <laughs> yesterday, I went into his room, and I was like, uh, Mama, hi. He just stared at me. And I was like, hi, Jeremiah. And he just kept looking at me. So I went to give him a kiss, and he pushed me away. <laughs> You have to have patience. That's what it really takes is patience. They might they may not understand exactly what you're saying and doing or anything, but that's why you have to be around them to teach them more. But you mainly have to have patience. Yes, ma'am. Um well like well, no, I really, I, I just tell them about my faith because I can't tell nobody, you need to believe in Jesus or this. I'll just give them my opinion on how I feel. You know, because at the end of the day, I know where I'm going. I don't know where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. As a team, you have to have, they both have to have patience, your mother, the parent and the child, because you still have to obey your parent, even if they wrong, you still gotta obey and listen to what they say. It does get hard sometimes, because I do, we do argue, but it's still my mother at the end of the day, and I still have to listen to what she says. Only, you only get one mother. <laughs> yes, ma'am.
<clears throat> yes, ma'am. I wouldn't call it jealous, but I would say, like, when I was in school, and um, they will talk about, like, the Bible and God and everything, and then I'd be like, well, no, see, that's not what I was taught and what I was raised by. And they'd be like, well, you're just such a church girl. You're such a church girl. I said, and I'm glad to be, you know, because that's all I've known was church. And so sometimes it's, it happens. We were going to call on you anyway. <laughs> go, go ahead. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, yes, ma'am.
grandmother? Did you have anything to say? We're so grateful, and we thank you, thank you, young lady, for the beautiful presentation and for the example that you set. <laughs> the way that you handled it, I'm sure it was Let us keep uh, Sister Jada in our prayers as she goes forward. Of course, we know that she's going to do well uh, because she has her mind made up with the Lord first, and then other things will fall into place. I think the scriptures, she handled it so well, talking about those things that we should hold on to and things we need to let go uh, in order to be true children of the Lord and to be the examples that he would have us to be. So may the Lord continue to bless and strengthen you and give you a hug. <laughs> Amen. Oh,